Hey everyone, it's Jack. Sorry again that I've been away for so long. I just recently moved. I've been through a lot of tumultuous times recently, and there's honestly some things that I still need to iron out. It's been a very draining time overall, but something that's been there to kind of cheer me up and keep me going is still Drag Race. I've been posting on this channel for almost three years now, which is crazy. And over time, I have experienced burnout here and there, but I still always find myself coming back to Drag Race as a pick-me-up, even if I'm on a break or not talking about a specific thing from the show. And what's been helping me the most as of recent is watching some old Snatch Game performances. So today, let's do a classic countdown. I want to count down my top 20 favorite Snatch Game performances. Please subscribe and follow me on my other social media to keep up to date with everything going on. It's a pretty self-explanatory list. I think these are the performances that make me laugh the most, or I just walked away feeling really blown away by how they portrayed this person. Of course, my humor and your humor may not match up, so if you disagree with my list, that's totally fine. I have a list of about 50 performances, and choosing only 20 from this list was like pulling teeth. It was really, really hard, and I think I've narrowed it down, but again, it could change really quickly. One last rule that I decided to make, only one performance per queen. As much as I would like to see Jinx and Dela occupy four spots on this list, it's probably a little better to leave those spots open. So let's hop in with number 20. One of the most creatively presented performances by one of the most creative queens out there, we have Raja doing Madam. Madam is a character that I don't think a lot of the younger fanbase knows about, including myself, but when I went back to do some research and just look at who this character was, I was just astounded by how much Raja nailed it. Madam is a puppet that appeared on a lot of late night talk shows, and the way that Raja dresses herself makes her look exactly like a puppet, down to the black sticks that are used to control puppets' arms. There is already so much insane attention to detail, but it can continues into Raja's mannerisms, also mimicking a puppet. Add in some really great jokes, and it makes one of the most unique and memorable performances on Snatch Game. Madam, have you spent time in New Jersey? Absolutely fucking not. <laughs> <laughs> Number 19 is Amethyst doing Tan Mom. This is one of two season 15 performances that appear on this list that I think are a lot better with the extended cuts of the episode. There is no doubt in my mind that she should have placed high in this episode. It would have given such a wonderful storyline to her. Especially after faltering for the first two weeks, this would have been a really great pick-me-up. She was really able to take a character that had very little material to go off of and make it into a personality that makes sense and make jokes that are totally in line with what Tan Mom would say. If you were to go back and watch any of the extended episodes for season 15, I would highly suggest this one. Because honestly, a lot of the queens got more laughs in the Snatch Game than were originally shown. So I think he's 100% my son? <laughs> <laughs> Number 18 is a notoriously safe performance that a lot of people agree should have at least been high, that being Pearl as Big Ange. This was such a good week for Pearl and such a big sign that she had a lot to offer in the competition. After weeks and weeks of being called sleepy or not in the competition, she busts out this huge character that she completely nailed. A running theme that was presented to all of the fashion queens on the season was that they were afraid to look bad. I think a lot of the time the judges wanted to see them take it there. Look ugly, make a fool of yourself, all of that. And I think this is the prime example of why Pearl made it so far in the competition. This performance showed that she was comfortable stepping out of her box. I mean, even looking at the lineup from far away, you couldn't guess that this is Pearl from first glance. She honestly had my favorite performance of the week. Of course, Ginger and Kennedy are honorable mentions, but I have just watched this video so many times that I'm almost like memorized on what they say. And the way that Pearl did Big Ange, it's more up my alley for humor. It's already underneath the mansion. It's underneath the mansion. I had a rough childhood, okay? I wasn't watching fucking Batman and Rock. <laughs> Coming in next is a very, very recent pick, Safira Cristal as James Brown. I should explain that I have a very dry and stupid sense of humor. And the way that Safira embodied James Brown, it was again right up my alley. The number one rule going into Snatch Game is that you need to know how to volley. And when Safira picked James Brown, she knew that RuPaul loved him. But to then immediately use the story that RuPaul told her in the workroom about seeing James Brown in concert. <laughs> the first concert I ever saw, it was December 28th, 1969. James Brown and the Famous Flames, and we were in literally the last row. Yeah. Using that to play off RuPaul calling her out for wearing the character shoes, it is one of the funniest things that I've seen on the show. My yeah, character you, shoes. The character shoes. That I you ain't got no character shoes. My name is James Brown. <laughs> 
<laughs> Last time I met you was 1969. <laughs> Couple that with some other really great jokes. I loved Plane's performance, but if Safira won this challenge too, I wouldn't be upset. Number 16 is Aja playing Crystal LaBeja. Something that queens fall into while impersonating someone on Snatch Game is taking iconic quotes and then just kind of throwing them into what they're saying. And in a lot of ways, that's what Aja is doing here as Crystal LaBeja. She's quoting an extremely iconic video. Where's Miss Sabrina? Because I'll sue the bitch. Where's Sabrina? I will sue the bitch, darling. <laughs> but when a queen is able to adapt and respond accordingly to the question with the quote, I think that's when it works out the best, and I think Aja did a great job here. That's one of the reasons why you won't be seeing Alyssa as Joan Crawford here on this list. Was it funny? Yes, in a lot of ways, I think it was. But the actual impression, I don't think was that great. Aja's impression was spot on, and I honestly wish we got more responses out of her because what was shown was just really great. Crystal La Beja. Are you having a good time, Crystal? Darling, I'm having the worst time of my life. <laughs> I just want to walk away so bad. At number 15, I have Raja as Latoya Jackson. I just mentioned how Safira took what Rue said in the workroom and applied it to what she was doing in the challenge. And if there's any example to show that's a really successful way of doing things, it would be with Raja as Latoya. She was able to take the I'm blank, but I don't like blank joke, come up with a new response to it every time, and have Rue dying laughing at every single response. I will say that some performances are definitely pushed up the list depending on how Rue is reacting to it, and this is definitely one of those performances. I think what Raja was saying was super funny, but the way that Rue was responding was equally as funny. I am a fitness expert, although I don't like to work out. And what am I wearing? A nice pantsuit. <laughs> Another notoriously safe performance that arguably could have won that week, coming in at number 14, is Simone as Harriet Tubman. I think this is one of those characters where you need to have the right delivery and personality to pull it off, and if anyone was going to do it, it would be Simone. It was the right amount of creative response without ever going too overboard. There were topical jokes in there, and Simone's personality in general is just really, really captivating. So it's shown through especially with this performance. A big thing that I loved was that she was able to tell both physical and verbal jokes. I love when a queen plays with our expectations, so when she was the first up on the panel and she was hiding, that immediately was funny and immediately put it off to a really good start. Yes, it's all for a good cause. It's all for a good cause. Yes. Sabrina! Speaking of physical jokes, one of the most funny physical jokes of all time in any Snatch Game performance, we have Naomi as Wendy Williams. I think with a lot of time, we agree that Naomi should have been in the top for this performance. It was a great performance, it would have had redemption for her Snatch Game from Season 8, and out of everyone, I think Naomi did the most research going into the Snatch Game and she felt the most prepared. The reference to RuPaul and LL Cool J, it is completely within the character of Wendy Williams. I think in a lot of ways, they played in her face this season and I don't need to do another video about Naomi, unless you guys want one, unless you want one. Regardless, overall having a really great performance and then ending on one of the funniest jokes ever, it gets her a spot on this list. Oh, you got I oh. Wendy. <laughs> For number 12, we're hopping over to Canada for the first time to talk about Melinda Verga's performance as Manny Pacquiao. If y'all haven't seen this performance yet, please do yourself a favor and go search for it. I can show a couple clips here, but not the full thing. The way that Melinda embodied this character, it is just so perfect. She was able to spin a lot of his really questionable comments about same-sex couples into him being a fish out of water on the Snatch Game panel. The delivery was just so sincere and it caused almost everyone on the panel to break in some way. So I, uh, I pictured them praying to Jesus, <gasps> but not this Jesus. This Jesus looks like Mike Tyson. <laughs> This is not Jesus. <laughs> if you haven't watched Canada season four, it is one of the best seasons in recent memory. And a huge reason for that is Melinda Verga. Right outside of our top 10 is Got Mick as Paris Hilton. The look was so correct. The way that she introduced herself was probably the most perfect anyone has ever done. Hey Ru, how's it going? Just let me know when the cameras are rolling and we'll kill it. Well, we've started, the cameras are rolling. <laughs> Oh shit, that's so embarrassing. Sorry. <laughs> and her winning on All Stars 9 Snatch Game goes to show that she is just a pro at this. What songs do you like to play when you're DJing? I honestly just press play and hope for the best. <laughs> 
At number 10, we have Katya as Bjork, and I don't think that there's ever been an impersonation that is more up a queen's alley. One of the best parts of Katya's brand is just confusing people as much as possible, and she was able to use that in this performance to wonderful success. I always wonder with queens and performances like this, if another person were to do Bjork in this exact same way, would it go as well as it did for Katya? I feel like a reason that this performance was so successful was because we knew who Katya was, and her impersonating Bjork is almost like an extension of who she is. Really crazy highbrow humor. I don't know, just a question that I'm throwing into the void. If you want to answer, comment below. <laughs> Number 9, we have the second performance from season 15, that being Lucy LaDuca as Joan Crawford. I think Lucy's winning edit on the original episode of season 15 was fine, but the extended version showed a lot more volleying and a much stronger performance in my opinion. I think a lot of the jokes that were shown in the original cut were jokes that Joan had said before that Lucy was repeating, but in the extended cut we got a lot more of Lucy being Joan and reacting to things that happened in the moment. Still one of my favorite jokes that made the original cut was Miley's foam finger. I wrote down my handy dandy foam finger. <laughs> oh, they, okay, yeah. I said Miley's foam finger. <laughs> Fully playing into and making fun of Spice's train wreck performance. There's another very iconic Joan Crawford performance that maybe you guys are thinking of. Did it make it higher on the list? I guess you'll have to wait and see. Coming in at number 8, we have Bob the Drag Queen playing Carol Channing. I think the Uzo Duba is also a good impression, but Bob just has so many quotable lines with this performance as Carol, and she was able to make iconic moments in half the time because she had to split up her two characters. She took some huge swings, and just the way that she characterizes Carol is so ridiculous, and it completely stole the show halfway through Snatch Game. Back to the matter at hand, yeah, yeah. I just wrote corn. Yeah. Number 7, it was so, so hard hard picking between Paul Lynn and Maggie Smith for the daily performance that I wanted to go with, but I think I have to go with Maggie Smith because it's another one of those characters where you just see it on paper and you're like, I don't know how that can be that funny. But basically every performance here onward, it really feels like they got possessed by this person. And that is 1000% true. It really just seems like Maggie Smith is sitting on the panel of Snatch Game. And it's just really interesting because you look at the responses that she's writing down and on paper they aren't funny and that's kind of the point. It's the way that she's able to deliver these unfunny jokes and make them funny because of the circumstance that Maggie Smith finds herself in. It takes so much talent to take control of the entire Snatch Game and have them buy into what you're doing. Kind of like with Melinda Verga, it's the same fish out of water concept. Well, can you get people to, that speak normal English next time for the show? Excuse me, we originated the language. <laughs> oh, okay. And coming in at number six is the other Joan Crawford performance, Jimbo on Canada season one. It was really hard deciding between these two, especially with the extended cut of season 15, but I do really think that Jimbo just embodies Joan whenever she decides to impersonate her. And watching it back, I think this also beats out Jimbo's impersonation of Shirley Temple, which was also great. Jimbo is so quick on her feet to tell a joke. She's able to come up with things on the spot or have things prepared, but like that Judy joke in there was just so insane. Don't you talk about my mother like that. Your mother and I invented the snatch game, okay? You missed your mother, smell my goddamn fingers. <laughs> you can really tell that Jimbo has a true love and passion for Joan Crawford, and that's felt through the couple times that she's impersonated her on the show. At number five, is the queen of stupid humor, Jujubi as Eartha Kitt. Do I really need to say anything beyond a sensible 74? Eartha Kitt is already a very irreverent type of person, and Juju being able to harness that energy and come up with things on the spot is incredible. As much as I love Shay's Flava Flav, I do think that Juju should have won this episode. It was just the perfect intersection of good impression and funny jokes that met at the middle in a perfect way. Roses are red, violets are blue. Pick me, cause I love you. <laughs> We're going back to the classic impression that kind of set the foundation for everything at number four, Chad Michaels as Cher. There are so many impressions from Snatch Game that I've burnt myself out on. I can recognize that they're great performances, but they're not my favorites anymore because I think I've just seen them too many times. But with Chad, I can still watch this performance and to this day still laugh. 
Like with Jimbo, Chad just has an appreciation and a love for Cher, and that shines through in the performance like nothing else. This performance just set the foundation for so many creative things on Snatch Game. Wig changes, breaking the fourth wall, completely avoiding the questions, it's all here. And the jokes just still hold up today. Cher's plastic surgeon, because look at Cher. Me. Allegedly, allegedly. She looks good, I mean. <laughs> Cher, I love the hair change. Thank you, I can't go five minutes without switching a wig. I love them. At number three, this one might be a real hot take me in this high, but it's Bag of Chips as Kathy Bates. I quote way too many things from this performance, and I think it is so stupid and iconic and hilarious. I'm constantly saying things like, I'm your number one fan. Hey, Rue, catch this. Mwah! It is so stupid, but it is so funny. Obviously, it's actually playing more off her character from Misery than the actual Kathy Bates, but this is their way of getting around copyright. Just the way that she does the natural progression of the storyline through being a fan of RuPaul is genius. Even if you kind of know where it's gonna go, I think you're still caught off guard by the end when she turns on RuPaul. I thought you were a good man, but you're just another lying dirty birdie. I've just read the rest of Guru. <laughs> Such a creative way of doing things, and honestly, I think this is one of the most underrated Snatch Game performances of all time. The top two performances, they aren't really hot takes. I think there's a lot of things that people could guess for these, but these are a couple of the most popular choices. At number two, we have Alaska as Mae West. Mae West is such an iconic person, and Alaska being able to take this and almost modernize her or just make her super dirty, like Alaska's spin on her phrase, come up and see me sometime, it's basically taking all of the innuendo out of the lines that were written for her, and just make it super brash and crude on purpose in the best way. Like with Dela, it really felt like in this Snatch Game, everything was kind of commanded by Alaska. The way she carried herself, the way she responded and volleyed to everyone else in the room, it felt like we were waiting for her to respond to everything. And this performance is only beat out by one other performance, someone who had just as much command, if not more, over the entire room. Why do you go there, Mae West? Because after your 10th visit, you get one free. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jinx Monsoon as Judy Garland is number one. I know it's an obvious pick, but it's for good reason. There are very few people that could have jokes go on as long as Jinx's jokes did in this segment and still have them be funny for the entire runtime. Everyone kind of just let Jinx do her thing because the impression was just that good. And to top it all off with a reference back to season five, such an extreme deep cut that kind of just blows your mind. It was perfect. It's really going to be hard to ever top this performance, but who would want to top this performance. That's it for this list. Thank you so much for watching. This is definitely a lighter video, but I want to get back to doing some really thought-provoking topics very soon. Still trying to work some things out, get out of this rut, but thank you so much for always being here to support me. I'll see you soon with another video. Hey everyone, it's Jack. I wanted to come in at the end of this video and just speak very candidly about things that have been going on, why I've been gone for a month, and just things moving forward with this channel. I'm still gonna be here, I'm still gonna post uh, before anyone thinks anything else. May was an extremely busy month and I keep trying to get back on a schedule. I know I always kind of say that, but I really want to because I think it's just a really healthy thing to do. But over the past like year to two years, there's been a lot of things that have kind of come in the way of me really enjoying making content. A lot of it is personal life stuff, uh, people that I thought I could trust, uh, couldn't really trust. That's things that I can't really talk about right now. And of course there are things going on in the bigger world that I think are really important to talk about and keep up to date on. And that is something that I have kept up with, just not on YouTube. Of course, I want to say Free Palestine. I have always believed that. I've kept up to date and shared and reposted things on my other social medias, but I haven't brought it to YouTube yet for honestly no good reason. It's still honestly hard to understand this platform that I have when I'm constantly not motivated to really ever create anything, but I also do feel this immense guilt because it is a platform that I can use to amplify voices that matter. And I try to do that a lot within the queer community, but of course I need to extend it out further when I can and I want to do that here. So below is a link tree called Operation Olive Branch, which is a really, really important and resourceful link that you can click. It will send you petitions, places where you can donate to different families, to different organizations that are helping the people in Gaza. I am going to sit down and continue to talk about these important issues because this platform is here and it is important and no amount of depression or unmotivation or guilt is going to keep me from talking about what matters. So please click the link below and if you can't donate, please just continue to understand what is going on. Sign petitions, spread the word, and educate people in your life. Thank you so much.